Good morning, good morning. Welcome to The Crossing. Hey, while we're giving it up, let's give it up for South Shore, Plant City, what's up? Hey, let's also give it up for Pastor Greg, Pastor Tamara. We love y'all, y'all are awesome. Pastor Greg will be back in the pulpit next week, so you're not going to want to miss it. We're actually going into a new series, um, What Makes Us Tick. Uh, It's really about who we are as the crossing, who we are as the crossing, because together we're crossing, and so it's who we are. And we're going to be talking about vision and values and and, uh, spirit-filled life and community, so you're not going to want to miss these next few weeks. Um, So if you have vacation, just push it off to January sometime and... (laughs) You know, just cancel vacation or whatever you had going on. But anyway, um, so today I get to talk about the uh, Spirit-Filled Life. And a really good book on the subject I'm talking about um, is, is a book called Spiritual Intelligence. So we've all heard, if we're in management at all, uh, or have been in management, we've heard about uh, emotional intelligence. And people who, you know, rise as executives are usually really good at emotional intelligence. Um, and it teaches us how to work with people in their emotional roller coasters and how to help people in the workplace. It, spiritual intelligence is much like that, and it teaches us how to engage with the Holy Spirit uh, in everyday life and how God actually wants to speak into every situation in our life, every moment of our day he wants to be with us in. And we're going to talk, we're going to talk about that today, but I only have a few minutes, and the book will give you, you know, a whole lot more. So I encourage you to get that book. Uh, So let's pray. Lord, I thank you for today. God, we thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here. I ask that you would uh, open our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, your word planted in us. I ask that you, you lead me as I speak. Help me not to say things that don't need to be said and to say the things that do need to be said. And, uh, Lord, I thank you for ministering to every person that hears this message. I ask that you would plant this word in their hearts and uh, draw us closer to you. Help us to become who you have designed us to be and uh, to the fullest in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as I was praying about today and coming up on today, actually, uh, the, when I was getting ready to come out, the, uh, the, you know, the, we have several services. So the first service I spoke, I heard the Lord say to me, that I'm empowering the Crossing Church today. So he, he wants to empower us today for ministry. And, and ministry is everyday life. Wherever we go in life, whatever we do in life, ministry should flow from us because the Holy Spirit is in us and leading us and guiding us. And if he's not, then we can fix that today also through salvation and, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to We're going to dig into that a little further. If you don't know, maybe you're new and you don't know who the Holy Spirit is. You hear hear us referring to him. So he is the the third person of the Trinity, which is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three are one, and they're known as the Trinity in the Bible. It's a a theological term that was given uh, to, to talk about the three as one. And the Holy Spirit is just as much God as the Father is. The Holy Spirit is just as much God as Jesus is. So he is God, but the difference is he is here with us, and he is with us everywhere we go. Jesus spoke, well, so he's spoken about in the Word of God, and the reason we want to talk about a spirit-filled life, we find in Romans 8, 13 through 15. It says, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. So if we live just to gratify our flesh, we're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, which is the sinful deeds of the body, uh, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. This reminds us the sons of God, but it's, it's the children of God. And for you did not receive the Spirit of God, again, to fear, but you received the Spirit of adoption by whom you cry, Abba, Father. So we want to be led by the Spirit of God because that is the, the evidence that we are children of God. And if we're not led by the Spirit of God, then we may not be children of God, which, like I said, we can fix that today. That's fine. Um, And we'll get that taken care of. But Jesus also talked about the, the Holy Spirit. He said, but the Helper, called him the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all things that I have said to you. This is in John 14, 26. So he called the Holy Spirit the Helper. He said, I, I, the, the Father will send a helper, someone to help us. So here's, here's, the, what, here's a good picture 
of the Holy Spirit. You are walking through everyday life, and if you are, a, if you are born again and you are a believer and, 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 and you're, you're spirit-filled and you're listening to the Holy Spirit, he is with you wherever you go. You're born again, he's with you. But, you know, we'll, we'll talk about being born again and the baptism in a minute, but Holy Spirit is with us. So we can actually talk to God who created it all at any time and bring him into any situation that we're in and get answers from him on any problem that we're facing. So that, I mean, it, it, he's here to help us live life. He's help, here to help us to, to have a full life and live, live life to the fullest and also have a godly life. That's why he's here. That's why he's with us. That's why he's here to help us because we all need some help. I know y'all look at me all pious like you don't need some help. I need help. I don't know about y'all, but I need help. So anyway, I'm just going to give you some practical stuff real quick about how to, how to walk a spirit-filled life. And, you know, so I, I might reference my life a few times in here, so that's fine. Just listen to me and, uh, you know, adapt it to your life however you need to adapt it to your life. But these are some things that we all need if we're going to live a spirit-filled life. First thing we need is we need, a time, we need to worship and pray. And in worship and prayer, we need to have a consecrated time daily that we get along with the Lord and we worship and we pray. We, 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 we pray the word. We pray for our, our friends, our loved ones. We, we, we pray and we worship. We honor him. We magnify him. The Bible said, tells us to, that we, we enter his, his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We want to get into his presence. So we thank him and praise him. And, and that's worship. We worship him daily. You know, but we can, we can also engage with him in prayer throughout our day because the Bible does say pray continually. And the way we do that is just engaging him throughout our entire day. You know, when you get cut off on the interstate and you want to give him the welcome to Florida sign, um, <laughs> instead you pray, Holy Spirit, give me strength. He's here to help us. I didn't know that was the welcome to Florida sign when I first moved here. I thought everybody wanted to fight me. But I found out it's just welcome to Florida. You know? <laughs> Anyway, so we can engage the Holy Spirit in any situation that we're in. If we need a, a, an answer at work, we can engage him. If we need an answer with someone we're dealing with, we can engage him. And he's there for us. We pray for others throughout our day. He'll bring people into our mind, and, and, and he's bringing them to mind so that we can pray for them. And he might drop a situation in our heart that we pray for them. That's praying continually. We also need a life in the Word. The Word of God. You know, the Bible says in John 1, it says the Word was, was with God and the Word was God, and that Word came and dwelt among men. It's talking about Jesus. So Jesus is the Word of God, and our Bible is the Word of God. So as we read our Bible, we're actually uh, coming to understand who Jesus is and who God is. And, and it's actually a living document that gives us life. It's almost like we're eating bread. Like you eat daily to live. We need to eat the word daily in order for our spirit man to live and be strong and robust. So we have a daily time that we read the Bible. What I recommend, this is one thing I do, and you, you may not want to read through the Bible in a year, and that's fine if you don't, but I, I, I recommend get on a Bible reading plan. You know, there's the Bible app. You can download it. Get on a reading plan that takes you throughout the year, and you read the Bible every day. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I read it every day. I try to read it every day, but some days I forget. I get up, I get moving, I get going, family pulling on me, people pulling on me, and by the time I get, I land on, on a couch at about 11 o'clock at night, all, all I'm doing is nodding off going to sleep, and I forgot to read. So there are days like that 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 happens, but I have a plan so I can jump right back on the plan and I can keep moving. So I encourage you to have one of those that you're reading through the Bible every day. So as you're reading, um, a scripture will jump out at you. So take that scripture and whatever thought you had about that scripture and put it in a journal. And what's cool about the Bible app is it has a place that you can journal. And you can just journal right there. And then one day a week, take you some extended time and, and study out the scriptures that have jumped out to you throughout the week. You know, sometimes when, when I take those days to study it out, I, I'll, I'll be in the Word anywhere from two to six hours. Now, that's not saying that I'm not trying to toot my horn and say I'm some kind of great person. I just, I, I love the Lord and I love His Word. And sometimes I just get caught up and I don't even know, 
I don't even know what time it is until I come out of my, my prayer closet where I, I'm, is also my office because there's way too many people living in my house. <laughs> but, uh, but so, so I, I, I also hide in there too. So that helps to extend the time. Because <laughs> as long as I'm in there, don't nobody ask me to do nothing. Yeah. They're like, oh, he's praying. Let him stay in there. Let him stay. It's like, don't disturb Bigfoot. He's in the closet. They're praying. <laughs> so we, and, and, but to understand how to study the Bible, sometimes we have to take courses on that. It's not something we just automatically know. You know, like, like me and golf. I, I mean, I, I think every time I play golf, I should be a pro at it. And I'm mad because I'm not a pro. I don't know if any of y'all have the same problem. Just because you get saved don't mean you know how, to, know how to study the Bible. And don't be mad or upset or shamed because you don't know how to study the Bible. We all have to learn how to do things. So I encourage you to get on YouTube. But most of all, I encourage you to go to our Bible college, the Crossing Bible College. Because I believe every, that's right, I believe every believer should take at least two years of Bible college because if we, as you take that, you learn good study habits. You learn how to study the Word and how to get revelation out of the Word of God. And as we mature as believers, we want to be able to get revelation for ourselves because last I checked, the only people who need to be fed all the time are babies. And we don't want to be that. We start out that way, but we grow. And we move forward with the Lord. We become adolescents where we can go to the refrigerator and get our own food. And then we get, become adults where we, we, we hope food's left because all the adolescents done ate it all. <laughs> it's just the truth. I can't tell y'all how many times I go to my refrigerator and I just get mad. I, but anyway. <laughs> and then I have to pray. I have to engage with the Holy Spirit <laughs> to come back. Get back to my right senses. <laughs> also, so in, in my daily work, he also wants to engage us in our daily work. You know, he's called you to, act, to be in the career that he's called you to be in. And some of us may ask him today, Lord, what, what career do you want me in? And you may find out you're in the wrong career path. And if that's, then that's okay. That's quite all right. But don't just quit your job and go get in the other one. Uh, prepare yourself for a move over into, into whatever God has called you into. You know, I've preached sermons like this before, and, and some people come up afterwards, and they'll be like, I'm called to ministry. I'm quitting my job tomorrow. I'm like, stop it. <laughs> we ain't got a job for you, son. You got bills, brother. You got to keep paying the bills, man. Get in Bible college. Take your first step. There you go. Get in Bible college. This is going to go way long because I'm playing way too much today. So um, <clears throat> he also wants to engage us in our family. And, 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 and with our family, to, to know how to treat our family, to be a representative of God to our family, to be a representative to our, to our family, um, and, and not only to our family, but our friends and the people we work with every day, to be able to engage in those situations. And, and the Holy Spirit wants to lead us in that. He also wants to engage with us in our service to the bride of Christ. Because there are two things that every believer, places that every believer should serve. And one is to the bride. We're to serve his bride. And the way we do that is we do that through life groups. We do that through discipleship. Because in life groups, we get in community with one another. We get to know each other. We're called to be in godly community together and to, to love each other and to help each other and to pray for one another and encourage each other. And, and then we're also called to make disciples. You know, that, that, that scripture that says, you know, go and make disciples is not just to uh, perfect people who are paid on a staff at a church. It's to everybody. We're all supposed to be making disciples. And, and also, there's a, there's a service to the body of Christ where we serve in a local church to fulfill the vision of what God has called that local church to do. And we're all, we all have a part to play in that. We all have a part to serve in that, where we jump in and we do what God has gifted us to do. If it's, if it's holding babies, it's holding babies. If it's doing outreach, it's doing outreach. If it's singing, it's singing. If it's praying for people, it's praying for people. If it's working with our, our students in student ministry or, 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 or in young adults ministry, then, then that's what it is. And we, get, we engage and we do that. If it's ushering or greeting or working in the parking lot or wherever it is, it's, we all get involved and we move, the, move the, the, the ministry forward into the vision that God has called us to. And that's our service to the bride. 
And then the next one is the Holy Spirit wants to engage us in a service to our community. He wants us to reach out to people, to lead people to him. In our workplace, he'll give you words for people at your workplace. If you ask him in the morning, is there someone you would like to speak to today? And he highlights somebody at work. Okay, Lord, what would you like to say to them? And just write it down. And all you have to do, it don't have to be weird. All you have to do is say, hey, man, I was in prayer this morning, and I, I asked the Lord, was there anybody he wanted to say something to at work today? He said, yes. They may think you're crazy, but it's okay. Because if he, if he said yes and he gave you a word, when you hand them the word and they read it, it's going to convict them. And God is going to minister to them. And they'll walk away. They might, they might make fun up front, but they'll walk away scratching their head going like, how do you know that? How did, I, what, how, how did you know? And then they'll come back. And God will minister to them, and they'll end up getting saved. That's how that happens. That's how we do that. So he, he, he wants to engage with us on all these practical levels. But before he can do that, there are two life-changing events that have to happen. The first one is salvation. The first one is salvation. And in, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7, it says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, us, that we might receive the adoption as sons, as children. And because, and, become, and because you are children, God has sent forth the spirit of his son, which is the Holy Spirit, into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son or a child. If a son, then an heir of God through Christ Jesus. At the time of your salvation, the Holy Spirit is sent into our hearts. We become born again. And that is, is what the Bible refers to as a deposit of a guarantee of salvation. So the, the Holy Spirit is deposited in our hearts at, at salvation for a guarantee that we will go to heaven, we will be saved, and we are saved. That's, that's, that's the evidence. That's the evidence. It's a deposit. It's in our hearts. So then the second event that needs, that needs to happen is the baptism of the, in the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, you, you need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. It's an empowerment for service. It's an empowerment for life. You know, uh, it, in, in the Bible, in Acts 1, 5 through 8, it says, John truly baptized with water. This is Jesus talking. But, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, let me stop for a second because I just showed you two scriptures. One says he's a deposit in your heart, which a, a lot of churches have said forever that when you get saved, you have all the Holy Spirit you'll ever get. That's false. It's not true. That's not what the Bible says. We, we go according to the Bible. So you received a deposit for a guarantee of salvation at, at your time of salvation. And that word heart is, is cardia, which means heart center of a physical and spiritual life. It's our heart. This other one where he says baptized is, is baptizo, which means to submerge into. It means to overwhelm. It means to, I just killed a spider. Not good. I get so distracted. <laughs> so <laughs> he was crawling up. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I to make sure ain't no more around here. <laughs> I'm totally lost now. Where was I at? <laughs> Baptism. Hey, yeah, there we go. All right. <laughs> it's, uh, it, to be baptized is to be overwhelmed by, is what it says. And he goes on to say, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall receive spirit power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That word upon means to superimpose something on something. So it's when the Holy Spirit comes on us and he immerses us. We are immersed in the Holy Spirit is when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. These are two different events. So one, and they, and, and I, I can, I can attest to this and I promise you, if, if anybody you talk to who's, who's been baptized in the Holy Spirit will attest to this also, that their, their salvation experience and their experience being baptized in the Holy Spirit were almost of equal life-changing events. I know they were for me because there's a supernatural empowerment that happens once you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. And now, the first baptism of the Holy Spirit you'll find in Acts 2, 2, 1 through 4, 
And this is where Jesus sent his apostles. He sent like 500 of them. He said, go and, and, and hang out, tarry, go and tarry until you are endued with power. And that's what he says. He says, um, until you're endued with power. And, he, and this is the account of that in Acts 2, 4. He said, go until you're filled with power. And now there were 500 of them, but only 120 stuck around and got it. There was 380 of them gave up and quit praying and quit seeking. And they, they didn't get it. Now, maybe they got it later, but they couldn't say, you know, I was part of the 120. You know, they couldn't be, they weren't part of that. You know, so they didn't get it. They gave up. So there's precedent in the Bible, and, and there's a lot of other scripture with this, so I encourage you to study this out. Don't let this be your only teaching in this. Go study it out. There, there's, there's precedent in the Bible that once, when you get saved, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit at the same time. Or when you get baptized in water, you, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Those are great times. But there's also a precedent here to say sometimes you got to go after it, and it takes a little while. I know for me, it took about six months after I, after I started going after God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I'll share more about that in just a minute. But there, there's precedent for both, and I think it's wrong of us to just say, well, you know, there's something wrong with you. That's why you're not getting it. No, that's not what it is. Uh, it got, putting God in a box like that is just wrong. And it always ends up shaming people and hurting people. And we, we ain't, God ain't about hurting people. And he ain't about shaming people. So we're not either. You know, so, and there's, there's precedent in the Bible to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. If you've, if you've had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to be refilled. In Acts 4, 20, I mean 4.31, it talks about the disciples were, were refilled with the Holy Spirit. They spoke the word boldly. You know, these were the same ones who received the first baptism of the Holy Spirit. They received another one in Acts 4.31. The reason being is because we're jars of clay. We're made of clay. In 2 Corinthians 4.7, it says, but we have, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Now, clay jars leak. Now, they might not now because, you know, we, we seal them in a way that, and put all kind of chemicals in there that, you know, we drink. And, you know, so it's just terrible for us. But we seal them up so they don't leak. But they, back then, they used to leak. You know, they would, they would sweat. And so it, it would lose what was in it. So it, it, there's a reason to be refilled. And there's also a precedent in the Bible that says we can actually choose to, to be filled with the Spirit or to be drunk with the things of this world. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.18... And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless action, but be filled by the Spirit. Now, it's not, it's not sin to have a glass of wine or, or to have a beer or, 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 or that. It is, a, it, is wrong, it is a sin to be drunk. And we can also be drunk on the things of this world. The enemy's figured out how to seduce us into just being intoxicated with the things of this world so much that we ignore the Holy Spirit. I mean, think about it. How, much, how many hours a day do we spend on social media? We'll binge watch, you know, something on Netflix, but we won't binge read our Bible, you know, or binge worship or, you know, because it all appeals to the flesh and it, it, it just makes it so much easier. The enemy is a master of distraction. And anything that can distract you from pressing in after the Lord, he's going to put in your life. And if it works, he'll keep working it. So if you put a stop to it, it won't work anymore. Now, one problem I think we've had in the body of Christ, especially in America, I don't think it's so much a problem overseas, but in America, we've made speaking in t uh, uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit all about speaking in tongues. And that's just not right. You know, uh, and both sides have made it that. You know, the side that don't believe in it, they've made it that. The side that does believe in it, they've made it that. And I don't think that's right. We can't make it all about tongues because Jesus didn't make it all about tongues. Jesus said you'll be filled with power. He made it all about power. Now, there were some manifestations, and tongues was one of them. But Jesus made it about a baptism of power where your life is transformed after this supernatural power overwhelms your life and your life is never the same. That's what, that's what Jesus made it. Now, and you look back through time and, and people that God used in big ways and you, you hear them talk about an experience with, that they had with God, which was their baptism in the Holy Spirit that they had 
and, and, but they never said anything about a tongue. You look at uh, uh, George Whitfield. He, he actually went out in the woods and he was like, God, I'm, I'm staying out here until I, until I get everything from you that I need from you. And he was in the snow. He's out in the woods under a tree and has this experience with God, but he don't talk about tongues. And then God used him in a big way, leading thousands and thousands of people to the Lord. He was a lawyer, walked away from his law practice just to, to be a circuit rider preaching. And, and, and D.L. Moody, same thing. He said he gives an account of being baptized with liquid love. And, and after that, his ministry was marked by the supernatural after that. Billy Graham, same way. You can't even explain what these guys have done, you know, in, in a natural way. It has to be God on what they're doing. And they all have had their experiences. I actually heard Billy Graham talk about his. He did talk about tongues. This is when U2 first came out. And he did talk about tongues. But you can't find that video no more. Some people don't want us to know that Billy spoke in tongues. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> y'all supposed to laugh at that. Y'all must be thinking Billy didn't speak in tongues. But anyway... <laughs> But we can't make it all about tongues. Reason being is there's four different kinds of tongues in the Bible. There's four in the New Testament that we, that, that we are supposed to operate in. Four different kinds. So the first one is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, 4 talks about it. It says that they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different kinds of tongues as the Spirit gave them the ability to speak. So yes, it was evidence of the very first baptism in the Holy Spirit. It was there and you'll hear people talk about it. It was, the, it was the first initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So it's still the first initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I don't know that we can make that correlation. So baptism of the, of the Spirit is one. So the second one is the Holy Spirit interceding through us. And you find that in Romans 8, 26. It says, in the same way, the Spirit also joins to help us in our weakness. Now, we have a weakness because you don't know what to pray. How many of y'all can say, I don't know what to pray half the time? The rest of you must not pray. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to blow you up. Um, but anyway, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings and utterances. So as, and this, this kind of intercession happens when we are in prayer. It's almost like a travailing, like a, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're really crying out to God for someone or for something, and the Holy Spirit begins to, to speak through you and pray through you in that moment, and, and it's an intercession, and that is a tongue also. So, and, and then in, there's our prayer language, which is talked about in 1 Corinthians 14. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than all of you. I wish that you would all pray in tongues. And, you know, Paul was just a little bit prideful sometimes, and I don't know how he knew he prayed more than everybody because I don't think he could know everybody and their prayer life. But in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, the Spirit he speak, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. So when we're praying in a tongue, we're not, we're not praying, we're not talking to you, we're praying to God. And we're not praying in our understanding. We're praying to God. We're actually praying mysteries. That word mysteries right there, if you, if, you, if you go back into the Greek meaning of it, the understanding of that mysteries is things that we don't have carnal knowledge of yet. So it's things that are in our future that we don't know is in our future. But our spirit man is connected to the Holy Spirit and knows to pray for those things. So our, in our prayer language, we're praying for those things. It also says he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, builds himself up. So if we want to get stronger in the Lord and we want to get stronger to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, we pray in the spirit. That's what we do. And that's our, that's our prayer language. So that's number three. So, and the fourth one is a message in tongues. And, and you find that in 1 Corinthians 12, 10, 12, 10. It says, to another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. This is talking about gifts. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. And to the, another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, the camp that, that, that says tongues is only a message, that's where they, they, they don't want to talk about the other ones. They want to talk about this one. Because they say, well, if there's a tongue, then there has to be an interpretation. Well, not necessarily. Because there's four. So there's three other ones that could be going on. And for the camp that says that you have to talk in tongues 
to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Well, I mean, or if you talk in tongues, you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I mean, you could have had a message in tongues. You could have gotten your prayer language. The Holy Spirit could have interceded through you, and you could have not, you could have not received the baptism of power. That, and those are the two reasons I think we really should not connect it to tongues. Tongues happen. And here, don't hear me wrong. Tongues are a part of a believer's life, a spirit-filled believer's life. They are. It just is what it is. I didn't write the book. Take it up with Jesus. He's the Word. That's what the Word says. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is about power and is not about a tongue, although tongues will come. Tongues will come. Now, I'm going to just tell you how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because what I love about the Word of God is that God gives us the answers for everything we need in his word. You just got to read it. In John 7, verse 37, it says, On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not been glorified. So there's, it's not a formula, but it's just kind of a step, a process maybe, uh, just a, a hint to say this is how we can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. First thing he says, for those who are thirsty. For those who are thirsty. And this, this kind of thirst here is not talking about a thirst like, you know, we, we hear, we we, you know, we drink all day long. We stop at the corner store and get a Polar Pop, just a half gallon of toxic sludge and <laughs> slug it down about four or five times a day. <laughs> and <laughs> that's not hydration, by the way. Uh, some people drink water and Gatorade, which is terrible for you too, but, you know, water is good for you if it's, if it's not polluted. And that's a whole, oh God, I'm getting so distracted. Um, <laughs> Check your tap water, by the way. It's, it's polluted, I promise you. I found out mine was, and I bought a filtration system. So get, I got to get back to thirsty. You got to be thirsty. I ain't talking about the kind of thirst we know, where, you know, you wake up in the morning like, I want a glass of water. I'm ta this is talking about a thirsty that's like, you've been in the desert. You've been in the desert for, for a week, and you ain't had no water. You, you don't care what it looks like. It could be mud, and you'll drink it. It could be toilet water, and you would drink it. It, but you're, you're so thirsty that, that you don't even care what it is. You just want to drink. Just a drop of water is what you want. That's the kind of thirsty is talking about. Those who are thirsty, those who are seeking the Lord, those who are, who are so thirsty for His presence that they, they, turn, they, they delete their social media. They turn off the TV. They push away from meals and, and, and fill that time with seeking His face when, and worshiping Him and, and honoring Him and thanking Him and in and, and just times of adoration and worship and in His Word and, and pushing away from all the things of this world that would distract us from His presence and saying, you know what? I'm so thirsty for you, Lord. I'm coming after you with everything in me. And the things that get in the way are just gonna get out of the way. Because those things don't satisfy anyway. I mean, think about it. How many times do you sit there and scroll? And as you're scrolling, you're going like, I don't know why I keep doing this. I'm just wasting so much time. And you just keep, oh, that's cool right there. And you just keep, hey, that's pretty cool too. And hey, here's a little game I can go into. And, and the whole time you're going like, I'm wasting so much time here. And you just keep going. I mean, am I the only one that does that? Because it's just designed to waste our life. The time you have here, you'll never get it back. The time we waste on things. Now, I'm not saying don't do things to refresh yourself, but I don't know about y'all. Social media ain't refreshing. It's maddening. <laughs> we, we binge watch stuff. We, we have all these distractions that pull us away from God. All these things that never will quench our thirst. Because God created us with a thirst for Him. A thirst for His presence. A thirst for His power. A thirst for Him walking in our lives 
daily, a thirst for him following, uh, just leading us into everything. He designed us with a thirst. So those of you who are thirsty, come. So then we just have to come to him. Come to Jesus, because the Bible says Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. So he, he baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. So we come to Jesus, and then we drink. That's, the, that's what the Scripture says here, drink. Drinking means it, it's, it's receiving into the soul that, that which serves to refresh and strengthen. To refresh and strengthen. The Bible says times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. The way we get refreshed and the way we drink is we get into his presence and the times of refreshing come. He begins to rain down on our lives as we, as we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We get into his presence and as we worship him, the rain of heaven begins to come down on our lives and we begin to get refreshed. Those who are thirsty, come and drink. That's how you receive it. And after you, after you come and you drink, the Bible says, out of your heart, out of your belly, will flow rivers of living water. And those rivers will first refresh you, first set you free, first bring healing and life to you, and then they flow from you, bringing life everywhere you go. Life into your family, life into your friendships, life into your workplace, life into your ministry. There's a, there's a river flowing from you because there's a river that flows in you. So I wanna give you my testimony and we're gonna, we're gonna spend a minute and, and give you an opportunity to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So how many, I, I, I haven't done this in any other service, but I feel like I should do it now. How many of you have, have ever received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with power? Let me see your hands. Those of you who haven't, this is not to shame you. This is to show you. Hands up again. Hands up again. This is to show you you're in good company. We love you. We love you. You're part of the family. God has this for you. I guarantee you, each person that raised their hand, they can tell you the experience, the day it happened, what happened, all around what happened, and it changed their life. And God wants to do the same for us. And for those of us who have been filled, we may need refilling because some of us are leaky vessels. <laughs> I tell them, my, my family knows they can't tell me nothing because I tell them I'm a leaky vessel. I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> Especially if I get on stage and I preach and it fits the story or fits what I'm saying, I'm telling. <laughs> so so they, don't, they don't tell me certain things. I, I don't know how I got off on that. But anyway, let me give you my testimony real quick. And... Uh, so when I, I, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, now we're not going to do any of this today. Um, our prayer partner is going to be up here. Our prayer team is going to be up here. But we're not doing this, this stuff I'm going to tell you. Uh, we're just simply going to pray. If you want prayer, Lord, help them receive your Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And, but, but, so I was in a church. I got saved. Um, and uh, I, the pastor preached on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I went forward to get prayer. I'd been seeking the Lord for the baptism of the Holy Spirit because I learned that I was, that's what I was supposed to do. And I don't know, I was, I was young in the Lord, uh, probably six months, not, not even six months old, probably five months old in the Lord. And so I went forward to get prayer and, and I got up there and the pastor comes, puts his hand on my head and he's, 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 he's telling me, repeat this phrase. And, and I can't understand what the heck he's saying. And I'm like, I, I don't want to repeat that. It sounds stupid. And I'm thinking this, and I got one guy on this side going, hold on, another guy on this side saying, let go. And I got three or four other people yelling at me, telling me to do other stuff. And finally, I just like, I was like, thank you, Jesus. And when I said, thank you, Jesus, the pastor was like, he got it. And he took off running. And then all the people around me just, ah, he got it, he got it. I'm like, I ain't getting nothing. <laughs> but I ain't telling y'all that. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my seat. <laughs> So I went back to my seat, shamed. I felt shame because I didn't get anything. I was like, what's wrong with me, God? Why didn't I get anything? 
You know, and it, it, was, it was a battle. The next week I, I was in prayer and I, I told the Lord, I was like, you know what, Lord? I'd been seeking it for probably six months for it. And uh, I told him, I was like, you know what? I'm done. I, I, you know, if you got it for me, I'll, I'll take it. I, I'd love it actually, but I'm done just seeking you for that. I'm gonna seek you just because I love you. Just because you're my savior. Just because you're so good to me. A couple weeks passed and I was on my back porch and I was, I had the, the radio cranked up. I, I lived in Georgia. I had some land that didn't cost a million dollars an acre. And Florida, anyway. Um, <laughs> so I had some land. I could crank it up and nobody would say anything. If they did, I didn't care. Um, so anyway, I got worship music cranked up. I'm sitting on the back porch just worshiping, just worshiping just thanking God for everything that he's done in my life. And at that time, man, it was so fresh. I'd gotten saved. I, I was in such a bad place in my life that God saved me. And, and the, just the, the thankfulness of salvation, I st I'm still thankful for it. And I was just thanking him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I was just thanking him and praising him. And, and all of a sudden, you know, I, I'm just worshiping and and tears are rolling down my face just from the, the just from the goodness of God and me me drinking of his presence. My face is lifted to heaven, my hands are up, I'm, I'm just worshiping and praying, <laughs> crying because of his goodness. All of a sudden I, I felt something start rising up, start just like bubbling up in me almost. And the next thing I hear, I hear a, I hear words coming out of my mouth that I couldn't explain. And so for the next hour, I, it just poured out of me in tongues for the next hour. And that day, that day, my life was changed forevermore. And God has the same thing for you. For you at Plant City, for you at South Shore, for you here at Tampa, and for you online. God has the same thing for each one of us. We're going to spend a minute here in just a minute in worship. But right now, there's the first thing that has to happen, and that's salvation. So let's all bow our heads real quick. We're just going to pray. And I want everybody to pray this out loud. Dear Jesus, I believe that God raised you from the dead. And I confess that you are my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Now, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you, if you prayed that prayer and gave your life to Jesus today, I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, on, the, on, on three, I want you to raise your hand and I want you to hold it up because we simply want to bring you a card and we want to connect with you to help you get started on your walk with the Lord. So if you gave your life to Jesus, when I say three, just raise your hand and hold it up until we get to you with a card. One, two two, three. Raise your hand. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. I see you. Keep it up. Keep it up until we get to you. Keep it up until we get to you. I see you. I see you. I see you. The Holy Spirit is being deposited, has been deposited in your heart today as a guarantee of salvation. Is there anyone else? We just want to connect with you to be able to help you on your journey with the Lord. feel compelled to just hold out here. Is there anybody else? Just want, there's somebody. We just want to connect with you. We don't want to embarrass you. We don't want to embarrass you. But I feel like the Lord is working on somebody right now. Just raise your hand if that's you. Hmm. Maybe so if you got a card at the end of the service, please come down and, and see one of, our, one of our prayer team and uh, turn that card in, please. And so we're going to stand now. Let's all stand. We're going to spend a minute in worship. They're going to go in and start worshiping. I'm going to pray over you. And, and now is the time for you to be able to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. If you've never received it or if you have received it and you need a, a fresh filling, now is the time for that. So we're just going to go ahead and start worshiping. 
and God is going to move. So I just lift your hands. Let's just set a mood. Let's set a mood of worship right now. God, I, I thank you for your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask in Jesus' name that you would baptize every person under the sound of my voice. Holy Spirit, move now. Pour out yourself upon us. God, I thank you. Let's go after him. Lift your hands. Let's begin to worship. Just begin to sing the song if you can't do anything else. But it, it, begin to thank him for the great things in your life. Begin to praise him for who he is in your life. And I promise you, the Holy Spirit is going to fill your life now. 